find the fastest clothes you can and talk skiing like a man. You know what? Who cares? A few years ago, I reviewed my entire old VHS library of Greg Stump videos, which turned out to be one of the most rewarding experiences after Greg got in touch with me and made me believe in the goodness of the internet and how it can bring people together. Which, to segue, if you would like, of course, to join the 150 Days of Winter team, then feel free to drop me a subscription down below so I can get closer to being monetized and make more videos. Which brings us to another VHS classic, Snow What? Who cares? a 1993 video that, if you covered up the top as I have, has all the hallmarks of being a Greg Stump film. Glenn Plake, check. Mike Hatrup, check. Punning title, check. Weird ski movie, double check. It's only when you reveal the top that you're thrown a curveball. Ah. Warren Miller Productions? Has old Stumpy gone over to the dark side, or should that be the vanilla side? Uh, reference to other video up there. It's only when you look at the credits of the video that you see the missing link, and that is Bruce Benedict. Bruce Benedict was one of Greg Stump's cameramen in many of his films. Uh, license to thrill and so on. Before I start reviewing the movie I've left a link to Bruce Benedict's photography website down below. I highly recommend that you have a look. There are some absolutely amazing ski photos there. Okay and I'm not just saying that because I'm about to slag off his video but truly yeah great great pics. So as we start the film we're quickly reminded that this isn't a serious movie this isn't an extreme skiing video it's not an extreme skiing movie but it does have two extreme skiers it's just a silly video containing two iconic extreme skiers doing silly stuff around the world trip to australia uh new zealand glenn's wedding i'm going to say mono lake but i'm sure i'm going to be told i was wrong uh, somewhere in the desert and then finally ending up in Verbier which actually takes up about half the runtime. It's only at this final location where everything settles down and you get more you get a more cohesive link of skiing and silliness if that makes any sense. This of course is where we meet famous Verbier residents, Marco Shapiro, who again is a great photographer, and telemarker John Faulkner, again, who have also appeared in previous Greg Stump videos. And throughout the film, there are little callbacks to other Greg Stump films, including Kim Reichelm skiing with a chainsaw, which of course is a reference to uh, License to Thrill, where she famously went and hit a tree and of course the front of John Faulkner's house which of course appeared very briefly in Blizzard of Oz. All in all it's not the skiing that's the problem. Bruce Benedict's eye for photography is as good as always, okay? I'm going to say it's the other stuff. The silly stuff that I can put down to like a contact high of hanging around with Greg Stump too much. But in this case, it has become somewhat diluted in the process. Here's another point. However good Bruce is with a camera, he could have done a bit more when it came to editing. There were a couple of sequences that are excessively long. Extreme skiing with Glenn Plake, which has a great payoff of Glenn jumping off a peak with no skis and landing like up to his waist in powder. The payoff is great, the build-up is just a bit long. Now, the runtime of this video is about 72 minutes. 
they could have taken it down to about 65 without ruining anything, in my opinion. My final point is about the music, okay? And this isn't a complaint. Well, it is slightly, but in a good way. Throughout the movie, there are two albums where most of the music comes from. And they are so polarly opposite that it is... If one is there, the other is so far over there that you can't even see it, okay? One of them is Bob Gibson's Folk Ski Songs. And the other is Mind Bomb that is like a very heavy rock album. When I initially watched it, I went and bought the rock album. But listening to it again, I have got some of Bob Gibson's music stuck in my head. And it's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. The fact that you go and find a, a ski album, and it was ski songs from the 60s. Brilliant. Whoever found that, a plus, but again, mixing oil with water, bleh. in some way, I miss like the musical coordination of Greg Stamp, because that was one of the most amazing things in his repertoire. And I think when it comes down to it, Bruce tried to make a Greg Stump film without Greg Stump, instead of making a Bruce Benedict film and doing something completely different. And it's for this reason I'm going to like give this a grade of C+. If you're a Glenn Plake fan or even a Mike Hattrop fan, you know, trying to find this on the internet is almost impossible, but it's worth checking out if you can, because again, it's worth watching. And so if you've enjoyed this and you'd like to see more ski movie reviews, let me know what ski movies down below in the comments. And of course, if you got it this far, if you would like to support the channel, hit the subscribe button and click the like button. And I will see you all in the next video. Ciao. Grab the fastest clothes you can. And talk skiing like a man.